as a church. And those of you that weren't here, and uh, let me remind you of the, just a brief part of the sermon. What uh, what he was talking about, uh, he, he gave the, the scenario of a, a, you have, his son had a 69, always wanted a 69 Camaro. And uh, there had to be a specific Camaro. So he, God answered his, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, prayers and, and uh, very specific prayers that he gave. But him and his father, Tommy and Tommy, Tommy and Tommy too, <laughs> they, uh, they tore this car down to its frame and re I started rebuilding it from the from the chassis up, from the frame up. And they ran into a lot of problems that had already existed. They had to correct, you know, that, that had happened along the way. And, and uh, But that's, that's what they had to do. And I, I, the Lord kind of hit me, that's us as a church. And we've, I, I've given messages here as of late as about us tearing this church down to its frame, to its very, I mean, bare, uh, just the, the concrete of the floor, if, if you will, and start back over and just build this thing back up because I think that we've uh, uh, we've lost our way along the way and uh, we just have to get our purpose back. We've got to get our center back and, and it starts by uh, uh, tearing this thing down to the frame. Last week I gave a, a message about, uh, and it was from Ephesians chapter 5 beginning in 20. Uh, verse 22, and, I, and I, I've talked about the husband and wife and that relationship and how Paul uh, goes in there and said, Behold, I give you a mystery that I'm talking about, the uh, actually talking about Christ and His body. He's the, he is the bride and we are, I mean, He's the groom and we are the bride. The church is His bride. And that was really, the whole thing was the, just giving a comparison of the husband and wife commitment to that of the church. And I gave you an example and drew it on that board over there. I'm not going to bring it over here and do it again. But I, I don't if you remember, I gave that uh, Mary, that example of marrying up wood. And how you, you uh, go through a process of, of putting them together in such a way that you've got a, a bow this way and a bow this way. Cups this way, cups that way. So that when you bring the, the two, all of these pieces, three or four or five, whatever, however big of a board you want. Since, by the way, you don't ever use more than three inches. That's the rule. You don't ever go over three inches with your boards. Uh, but uh, you you uh, you put all them together and then split each one of them on, with a table saw. Yeah, and, and I, I gave you that process. And what that does is it, it marries up each one of the boards. It it marries them up as as far as being the same uh, width. I mean, uh, as far as the uh, uh, and, and the blade going through each piece at the same time simultaneously marries them up so that when you bring them together they have the same movement through the blade that is left in, in that board and then when you take all of those and I talk about the reference marks how you you make those reference marks in, in it so that when you take the, the boards off of it that you had this holding them together temporarily and you glue all those things back up you put some pressure on those with, with the pipe clamps, bar clamps and you leave it overnight and then that board is ready to, to you, you plane it and by, if you do a good enough job marrying those boards up you cannot tell where one starts and the other one uh, ends. I mean, they're, they're that close, especially if you go through the trouble of trying to match up the grains along the process too. But you cannot see the line. And I, and I gave the example, once you square it off, you've got little pieces that are left, and you go to break those. That's your test. You go up and break those, and you should not be able to break it in the joint. Well, guys, that process is, is what the church membership is. The church membership is, uh, uh, each one of us as church members, is that we're not all the same. Some of us are both one way, some of us are both the other way. But all of us together, when we, we come together as one unit, then we are a complete unit. Amen? Amen. Our problem, I think, sometimes, and, and, and God, I, I hold a lot of the blame, don't get me wrong. But as a pastor, I mean, the buck stopped right here. But uh, I think we just... Uh, we, we've missed, uh, not missed, but we've just kind of, I don't know, we've gotten comfortable, too comfortable in, in, the, in a place I'm going to describe here just in a moment. But uh, that last week's message springboarded us into this, uh, this, this series of messages, three weeks. We're going to be in it, hopefully three weeks if, if I don't 
I, I don't need a little bit longer than that, maybe, maybe some of those two parters, but, uh, and if I don't keep going, like, if I don't get a move on, I might have to make it a two-parter, right now. I wouldn't plan on setting it up this long, but, because uh, I've got a, a lot of scripture to read, 31 verses, and y'all said, oh my God, here we go, here we go, I'm read. That's why I got these glasses, <laughs> so I can see a little better. But, uh, anyway, the title, this, this message series is, I Am a Church Member. Now, I, I would like to say that I, th this is an original uh, title, and, and today's subtitle is one of many parts. But I got that from the book that was given to me, that is, man, this is a great book, and I urge you guys as church members to get hold of this book and read through it. It's got a, it's, it's an interactive book. It's not just a read it book. It's an interactive book. It comes with challenges at the end of each each chapter. And it says, it's, it's, I am a church member. And it's by Thomas Rainer. Thomas Rainer is the uh, is the owner of, of Lifeway. I'm not sure if it's Lifeway Ministries or Lifeway, the, the stores, the uh, Christian bookstores. But uh, I urge you to get this thing. I stole the title. I stole the title. Uh, for this series, I am a church member, and uh, we're going to be this week. We're going to be in, in chapter First uh, Corinthians chapter twelve. Next week, First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, and then finish up with fourteen. And after we get through with this series, we're going to move into a small group ministry once again in our church. We did that years and years ago, and it really helped our church as far as uh, uh, maturity and growth. And we're going to go back into that. I haven't completely decided on which uh, uh, which uh, small group me, uh, uh, that we're going to do, but we're all going to be on the same page. It's all going to be out of the kit, and all of us will be on the same page. We'll we'll go through the the ministries, and I want you guys to be thinking about, praying about in the meantime, because next week we're going to start uh, trying to put this thing together, and that is this: who's going to be a sponsor, a sponsor home? You know, uh, me and my wife. I've already volunteered, me and my wife. We're going to uh, be a sponsor home for the Quinlan area, that that, uh, that area of town. But we need to, to get you guys kind of scattered out into different areas of town so that it's closer to uh, what, whoever's closest to that, that home can go to that home, and all of us will be involved in that whatever day of the week the, the group picks, as long as you do it sometime during the week. But... Uh, Anyway, we're going to do that, and then it, this this will be whichever one I pick, guys. It will be probably a 40, uh, 40, uh, 40 day series. I mean, forty day uh, small group ministry structure. And once we get through that forty days of uh, of Bible study, or forty weeks, I guess it would be, then uh, then we will move directly and fight and finish this thing up with a revival. We've been talking about revival for a couple of years now, and we're going to do it. Amen? All right. I've said all of that, and, uh, uh, just to, and, and I want to set it up like that. Just keep it in mind, guys, is we're talking about church membership and what, what the responsibility of this series is about, what the responsibility of a church member is. Amen? And the importance. It starts out in Chapter 12, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, beginning in verse 1. Now about, now about uh, spiritual gifts, brothers. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when, when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. And guys, we still do that as, as uh, easement as Christians. We get caught up in idols. That, that could be a bass boat. It could be too much working all the time just to make the almighty buck. Just to, uh, there's small uh, little idols, little gods that, uh, that we, uh, the, anything that gets in the way of us serving the Lord is just an idol. Huh? Yeah, foobal, yeah. Or is <laughs> as foosball as uh, you know, the, the, the water boy goes, his mom always calls it. Foosball. All right. All right, idols. Uh, that's another one. Idols. Verse three. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and that's a polite way of saying cussing about Jesus. Guys, how many of us take Jesus' name in vain have, have in the past? 
Well, if you're under the Spirit of uh, the Holy Spirit, you're not going to want to do that. It's not really going to be in you to do that anymore. Amen? But it says, uh, uh, it, it says that, uh, therefore, I tell you that, that, no one, uh, that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So you can't really say that He is Lord unless you got Him in you, is what He's saying. That's what Paul's saying. You've got to have the Spirit in you in order to say, or it's not just say that Jesus is Lord, because if you're not saved, you can say that, right? You can utter the words, but they have no meaning unless He is in you. That's what He's trying to say. That's what He's saying. I mean, you can say Jesus is cursed. I just said it. it. don't mean that you don't literally say it. It means you don't mean it. It's not from your heart. Your heart says that Jesus is Lord if you're saved. Verse 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the, man, uh, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for, a, for the common good. And that is the church, the common good. The one there, uh, to one, there is, there is given uh, uh, through, the, through the Spirit the message of wisdom. And we learned, remember when we were in James not that long ago, any of us who pray for wisdom, ask for wisdom, it's not wisdom and just like God, it's wisdom and, and discerning God's Word. He, is, he will freely give that to anyone who asks. I tell you what, guys, every morning when I get up, and I'm not bragging about this at all, because if I'm going to preach it, i got to do it. Amen? I urge you, all, everybody, even new Christians, if you, when you get up in the morning, you pray. And then you open up your word, God's Word, and, and, I, and I suggest that you go to Proverbs, because there are 31 Proverbs, one for every day of the month. Amen? Like today was the, was the uh, I already forgot what day it is, 20? I did Proverbs 20 today. Guys, I read Proverbs 20 last month. I read Proverbs 20 uh, the month before that and the month before that. But every time, I open, before I open God's Word in my prayers, I ask if God reveal your Word here to me today. As I'm studying your Word. Did you know I get something out of Proverbs different than I didn't see before because of that? I ask God for revelation, for wisdom, and understanding of His Word. Amen? All right. Verse 8, I believe, right? Uh, to one, there is given through the, through the Spirit a message of wisdom. Now, I'm going to further along that, but I've got to complete, continue reading here. Now, to another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of, of healing by, the, the, by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And, and to still another, and, and to still another, the interpretations of tongues. All these are the works of the one, uh, of the one and the same Spirit, and He gives uh, the, them uh, to each one just as He determines. Now, I've heard people uh, preach on this. You know, there's, there's nine gifts. and I've even heard a preacher one time said, I'm fluent in seven of them. Oh, you ain't neither. Man, you way too proud of yourself. You think way too much of yourself. Uh, guys, I'm not going to say that you ain't going to have a few gifts. But I'm saying that if we start uh, concentrating on what I just read, that litany of, of gifts right there, then you're shortchanging God. He is more powerful than... And, and he's got more in his uh, in his arsenal than just the few we just named. Jesus and the and the Spirit of God is everything we need. Everything He needs us to be, He is, and that is manifested in us as He wills it. That's what He's saying right there, as He determines. Now that's something you can gin up and do yourself, guys. That's just putting on the show. That's trying to make people think you're holy when you're when you, you got some gift and you really don't. Make yourself look a little bigger than what you are. Now, 
along this way next week. I, I, I was going to do it this week, but I didn't have it at home. It's in my office. I got some more books over there that's, uh, that's got a test. And uh, we're going as we read through this, guys, uh, we need to know as church members, because we all need to be plugged in, we need to know where our gifts are so that we can use them in the body. Amen. And there is a test that, that's out there that I, I went through it. My wife has went through it. Other folks here in the church went uh, a while back. I went through this, uh, uh, took us through a Bible study that uh, on leadership. And it, uh, it, it has a, a test there that, that, that uh, uh, lets you know, shows you where your gift probably lies. And that's uh, where you should try to get plugged in in the church. Amen. Amen. God, because guess what? Uh, I, don't, I can't plug everybody in. I don't know what your gifts are. Amen? And, and, and vice versa, y'all don't know what everybody else's gifts are either. Man, that's us as a response. The responsibility lies on us as church members to find out where we need to be plugged in at and get plugged in. Amen? Now, some of it's pretty obvious, and, and I can tell us uh, when we, me and my wife do the new members class and find out who you are, what you're about, get you plugged in. But that's not always true. Like I said, the uh, uh, the, uh, the the gifts that God has, I think they're innumerable. I think they're just there's many, many. Amen. But we're just talking about a few here today. Verse twelve: The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And that's where the uh, one of many parts is is where I I got the subtitle of today. One of many parts. I am a church member. One of many parts. Uh, and, and though and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is. So it is. So it is with the Christ. So that I, I remind you of last week's message that Christ is the groom, we are the bride, and uh, it, he is the uh, uh, church. I mean, the, his body is the is the uh, is the church. Can't be a. Uh, <laughs> you can't be a member. Of his body, unless you ask him into your life, Amen. and then you become part of his body, and then he's going to plug you into a local body, Amen, for you to serve. And you know, I, uh, I, let, me, let me say this point real real fast right here because I didn't make it last week, and, and I and I kicked myself for for not making it. You know, Paul used that marriage. That marriage is is a comparison of the uh, of uh, the body of, of being. being uh, in the, uh, in the body of Christ. And uh, we're married up with Him. Guys, uh, you don't go from marriage to marriage to marriage to marriage, whatever, you know, just whatever, whatever whims you, you know. I'm married to my wife, and I don't go looking for other women to be married up with. Amen? She's my wife. I believe that church service should be, and membership should be just as serious almost as serious as getting married. You should find the right the right mate for you that God has for you and get married up with the right church. And guess what? You stay married to that church until God divorces you from that church. Amen? You don't leave because... <laughs> because you're uh, mad at the, at the pastor, or mad at somebody, you know, disgruntled. Guys, how many of us in our fam own families uh, get disgruntled up with our, with our uh, family members? I've been there. Uh, probably right now I don't like some of them. But, <laughs> but I love them, and I'm not going to get rid of them. They're my family, amen? All right, I've got I to keep going here, or, or I'm, I'm going to run out of uh, time. Verse 13. For we were all baptized by one spirit into the into one body, whether Jews, uh, whether Jews or Greek, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. So establishing this first, it is God that moves through the church, giving us abilities. He is the one that needs to get us plugged in, and He does that by by uh, 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 as, as we're going to see uh, by making us a. a whether this is part of the body, whether it's a foot or a hand or a ligament or, or a heart or, or a head. Uh, no, no, God, you can't have more than one head. If you got more than one head, you, that's a two-headed monster, three-headed monster, four-headed monster, 50-headed monster. It just, that's a monster. 
It's got to have one head. <laughs> and that head is Christ. I'm the under shepherd. He's the shepherd. Amen. And uh, I did a sermon. I think one of the first sermons I did. Uh, I know it's the first sermon I did. I gave a, uh, a comparison of the of the corporate world and, and how the, uh, the you know you had a triangle that represents the uh, uh, the world and, and you got the CEO, the president of the company, right right up here, and all of his employees are underneath him. Well, see, the church model is upside down. Amen. You got the pastor right there, and you got the, and he's got the weight of everybody else in that church home. He serves everybody else. It's not like the, the it's a servant leadership uh, for him. It's not like the, uh, the like the, the world is. And if I don't get moving on here, we'll go. verse fourteen. Now the body is is not made up of of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, uh, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should, should say, uh, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it, it, would not, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of, of hearing be? If the whole body were the, were the ears, where would the sense of, of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, uh, the parts in the body. <coughs> and this, what we're talking about here, is Rector J. This, this, uh, this, uh, unit, this body of Christ. Oh, where was I? I just moved my finger. But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the of, uh, the parts in the body, every one of them, just as He has, has, has wanted them to be. If they were, were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. I'm going to stop right here just for a second. I don't remember where I was. Now let me go ahead and read on and, and uh, then I'll come back. And hopefully I'll remember this and not forget it. I'll kick myself again for the rest of the week if I do. Anyway, verse 21. The eye cannot say, cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts of and the parts that that we uh, that we think are, are less honorable, we treat as we treat with special honor. And the parts of the uh, parts that are uh, uh, unpresentable, there you go. The parts that are unpresentable are are uh, treated. Uh, with special modesty, while uh, while our presentable parts need to need no special treatment, but God has combined the the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lack that lacked it, so that the so that there uh, there should be no division in the body, but that is that its parts should should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is, is, is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, here's what I fear, and I know, it's, and, and I, uh, as I was studying uh, for this, this sermon, uh, I think we, as not just us here at Raptor J. Cowboy Church, but guys, uh, church is all over. We try to understand uh, the, the church uh, relative to what we know in the world. That's why we try to, to make it an organization like a, uh, like a, a, like a, 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 a business. And you can't do that with the church. It's not a business. It's a, it's a living, breathing body. It's, it, in fact, there's, I don't think there's a way to compare it except for the way Apostle Paul did and, and, and the way he's doing right here is that it is the body. Each of us are members of the same body. You can't say that it's a... a, a, a the, the, you can't put the CEO type thing on unless you want to call the CEO uh, uh, Christmas and Easter only people. Christians. There's a lot of CEOs. I, I know some CEOs. <laughs> Also call them priesters. I forget some of the other names we we give them, but uh, that are those, those are folks, guys, that they really don't have a. Uh, they say that they're. You might see them 
uh, once or twice those two couple times a year, they say they're members, but they're really not. Because being a member is really getting plugged in and being part of the body. Amen. And you can't do that just coming every now and then. My foot, and I need it every day. I need to be able to walk. And incidentally, if my foot gets a sore, I don't cut it off. Do I? That's kind of silly. Walk around with a peg leg for the rest of your life. Just because you got a sore on your foot? Come on. Well, no one of us are, uh, as, as, part, as body parts, guys, we are not any of us uh, dispensable. I mean, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, y'all don't understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you can read my mind. If I stick my tongue out, you'll probably see it. <laughs> but, uh, but we're not indispensable. We're, I mean, we are indispensable. We, we are part of the body. And uh, guys, I know that uh, sometimes you think maybe uh, the elders or somebody is, is, is running folks off asking leave. We don't do that. We do not do that. I learned a long time ago, guy Gary Morgan over there at Ellis County Catholic Church. You know, we were going through some uh, some times back, way back when we uh, when I first became pastor. He said, Bob. He said, I know it's in our constitution that we could uh, that we could vote somebody out, but I never ever go there. Never will I ever go there. And I suggest you do the same thing. Don't do that. So we don't. <clears throat> We will hold folks accountable, but we're not going to ask anybody to leave because all of us are important. All of us. Amen? Alrighty then. I was at 27. But I, before I got there, I was going to explain a little bit more, wouldn't I? Got to make that point I was going to make. I would kick myself if I don't. But I got to remember what it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was trying to make a point. Uh, in fact, that the book that I was uh, urging you guys to to read, the author was talking about uh, church members when he was growing up. He said he was in the middle class, and, and uh, uh, they just built a a, house, a community there that they just bought a house and. They were bringing in some folks who were, that were part of this development. Were bringing in a country club, and this country club was was uh, one that uh, that you could, uh, if you paid membership into this country club, then you were uh, you had certain perks, you know, because it had a swimming pool that you could use all the time. It had a place where you could uh, have parties and stuff inside that thing. It's kind of like a clubhouse at a at an apartment complex or something like that. But it was available as long as you paid the dues. You get in there. And uh, you could order a burger from the kitchen, just whatever you wanted to do, you pay for it. But you, you had those perks because you paid the dues to be in that country club. I think that, that uh, in fact, I know just, uh, that uh, church folks sometimes, God, when we go in the church, we think because our ties are somehow the dues to our country club. We think the church is more like a country club rather than a body of Christ. See, we want perks. See, we get in the mindset and it, all of us can get there that we come to church and we want to be served. We want to get. That ain't the way God designed the church. He designed the church that you come and serve at the church. You come and give at the church. You know, I remind everybody that God's uh, principle, His, His primary principle is reaping and sowing. And if you need to be fed in an area, then you need to sow a seed in that area. Amen? Amen? So that you can receive what you need. Amen? Amen. And, uh, you know, I hear people talking too. Uh, I've heard it uh, <laughs> as long as I've been preaching that, uh, well, I'm just not getting fed. That's one of the reasons I believe. I just not get fed. God, let me tell you something about the Word of God that I, that I understand. It says that you give the Word of God and it will not return void. Amen. Let me tell you something, God. This is a living, breathing Bible. Amen. Amen. I told you that I read Proverbs and I ask for wisdom and understanding and I get something different out of it every time I read it. Amen. It doesn't matter where I turn in this Bible. It doesn't matter how often I read it. It is food. It's feeding me. 
You know, I, there's a, there's a, I, I love listening to pastors on the radio, and there's some, some favorite pa uh, 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 messages that I hear that I listen to them over and over. And I love them. I guess you can get fed. See, I, I, I think that, that we come to the church sometimes and we think, well, I, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear something else. You know, I don't want to hear what the preacher talk about today. Well, guess what, guys? There might be somebody else in the body that needs to hear it. Amen? 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 See what I'm saying? Leave it up to that God is giving me a, 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 a sermon to, uh, on my heart to preach, and somebody's going to get something they need out of that, out of that message. Amen. Amen. And I preach messages where people, uh, this, this, I see on Facebook, stuff like that, gets me all down in my spirit because they said, uh, this is going on about how bad it was. And then in the same sermon, I hear somebody say, that's the best sermon I think I've ever heard you preach. How can that come out of the same thing come out of two people or seven? Because someone You see what I'm saying? Something. Guys, it don't matter if, 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 if you don't want to hear it. It's the Word of God. And if you allow it, it will feed you. Amen? Amen. It may not be what you want to hear, but it is the Word of God. And it is food for your spirit. Amen? I didn't mean to get on that big of a rant about that. If you get back on this country club uh, mentality. Well, we just want to be served. We need to get into the church to serve. Guys, I, I, I was talking to somebody earlier this week, and uh, you know, when you, when I get down in my spirit, I'm talking about getting down in your spirit. I'm talking about getting down in your spirit where you don't even, you can't even utter a prayer. Y'all ever been there? You can't even bring up the words for a prayer. Thank God, he says that uh, in those moments, he will give us uttering the, the murmuring, the, the groan of the Holy Spirit that speaks volumes. Amen? Amen. No auditory words. But just thank you, God. Just, just drop the prayer, and he will minister to your heart. Amen? Amen. But, <laughs> but I, I've been down in my spirit like that. Did you know what lifts me out of my, the, my, my, my funk? And it will you too if you just allow God. He's going to put you into service. He's going to bring you, He's going to bring someone your way that you can minister to. And it's going to lift your spirits. It's strange how He does it. The way He gives us rest is supposed to work. I don't know how it works, but it, it works. Amen? You get tired, you get down, and, and man, he just, he just puts more work on you. And then you lift your spirits up because you're helping others because that's what we're designed to do. Amen? <clears throat> it's not just the pastor. It's everybody. Everybody. You've got you to gotta just uh, look for it. God, just, when you get like that, just you gotta sing songs. Sing some, some holy songs and start lifting your spirit up. Been asking, God, show me who I can help. So I can get out of this funk I'm in. Amen? Amen? See, that's the body working. That's the body working. But you got to get out of the country club mentality and get into the into the servitude body uh, in, in, uh, frame of mind. I guess what I'm trying to say: get out of the, the uh, get out of the uh, country club frame of mind. I mean, that's when you start looking at it like this too. Well, uh, these ties, they're my dues, and, and I, I think I ought to get different things out of. I, I, you know, I'm paying for this. And I mentioned that last week or the week before, guys. If you start thinking of, of it, it's your ties, it's, it's yours, and it's dues, that you expect something out of it, you're in the wrong heart right there. Because it ain't yours to begin with. It ain't yours. It's all God's. He has asked for 10% of it back. And that, in any church, that, uh, that discernment is up to a finance team, but it's up to the elders. And and, uh, and and they're the ones responsible for what what goes on. Uh, let's continue reading. Verse uh, verse twenty seven. Now you are the are the body of Christ. All of us, church. God, let me tell you something. I've been up at this church. I was here in the process of building this thing up from the ground up. This church, and I can tell you guys that this is a building. Amen. <clears throat> and it is an empty building most of the time, except for a couple of times during the week. And it is not a church until the church body shows up and, and to be inside this church. 
See, it, it's not. This is not Raptor J. This is Raptor J. Amen. Amen. But he says, uh, uh, verse twenty-seven. I'm gonna read that again. Now you are. Uh, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you are as part. Uh, uh, you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Then workers of, 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 uh, of miracles. Also, those having gifts of healing. Those able to, to help others. Those with, the, with gifts of administration. Thank God for them because I am not an administrator. That's one of my, where, one of my weaknesses is. So guess what? God puts a bold like this. God puts other folks bold like this to help me out on each side. I got a, I got one bow like this and one bow and bow like this on both sides of me to help keep me straight and vice versa. Amen? Amen. That's the way it works. Amen. The pastor is not Superman. He is not all knowing like God is and, and, and omnipotent and all that stuff. You know, all thy presence is not up to, but all of us together work together to fill up the voids and the and the weaknesses that we have. Amen. I don't quit preaching so much on this. I, I, I keep, I keep move, losing my spot. Verse 28. And in the church, God has appointed... Oh, I went through that already. You look up there. 29. <laughs> uh, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of, of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly, eagerly desire the greatest gifts. Now, guys, I guess that's what I'm saying is that, that uh, God is the one who appoints, and that's why it's so important. Going back to the, the way I began this thing and kind of tied last week's message to this one is that uh, 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 God is the one that puts all of us together as a church body, and He is the one that uh, some of us are hands, some of us are ligaments that that, that work the body that are unseen. Some of us are blood vessels that keep the, the vital uh, the blood getting into the rest of the body. Some of us are the lungs breathing li uh, air and life into the, into the body as well. Some of us are just hands. Some of us are fingers. Some of us, do you see what I'm saying? We all have a, a needs. I mentioned before, if I get a sore on my foot, <coughs> I'm not going to cut my foot off. I'm going to tend to that sore. I'm going to fix that sore. Amen. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back healthy so I can use my foot again. Amen. <coughs> Pardon me. But the same way in the church, guys. If one of us uh, gets into a place where uh, we're not being, you know, we're, we're sore or whatever, whatever. If it's in your spirit, whatever. But you're unplugged, then we need to come uh, uh, beside each other in, in the spirit of love, and that's going to be next week's. Uh, message being in, in the love chapter uh, of the Bible, uh, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. But uh, we need to come together with in the spirit of love, not to chastise, not to uh, to put somebody down or, or tell them how bad they are, but but to come beside them and help them heal. Amen. Amen. A word of encouragement. Uh, Ephesians uh, Ephesians four twenty nine kind of love. You speak words that, that edify and build up the, 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 the church member when they got the sores on them. You don't cut them off. Unfortunately, a, a Christian community too often devour their own. Instead of, it's kind of like I've mentioned this before, like chickens in a, in a hand yard. They just start, one of them starts bleeding a little bit, all the others just peck it to death until it dies. Least death just dies. Unfortunately, that's the church sometimes. I said we, we're taking our church back down to the frame. I mentioned part of it has been the, that we've got to we've got to get into the mindset of serving. We have to get into the mindset of giving and not kicking. Amen. Amen. I know folks that uh, is not even here anymore because they came to the uh, to this church. With the, the mindset of just constantly get, 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 never give. And guys, it's, that's always short lived. You might you might make it two or three years, but sooner or later you're gonna you're gonna leave because the human side is gonna, gonna come out and fold 
and you're going to be sorely disappointed because you don't get what you want. Amen? And you're going to leave. But, there's another area in our church, and, and guys, was the, it's always been a, a sore spot that's, uh, in, in our church, and, and I don't really, there's, I guess there's many, uh, there's not any just one certain thing that you can pinpoint why, but uh, uh, we have a uh, 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 we have an arena ministry right there in that third. Guys, for whatever reason, there's there always it doesn't matter what arena team we have, there always seems to end up being like a almost a division between church and them. That wasn't quite the uh, the problem when our church was right there before this church was built. Our church was in the arena. It wasn't that bad because we all served in the dirt. Amen? Amen. But now that we're here. See, we did things backwards here at Record J. Cowboy Church. Our first pastor, uh, uh, Frank Locke, his vision, God gave him the vision of buying this place. He was right over there in the, in the uh, uh, SNS Arena now. It was Terra Classic then. But he was taking pictures, and his camera zoomed in on this place from there, and the Lord put it on his heart right then to purchase this building for Raptor J. Cowboy Church. Call it Raptor J. Up to that point, we were just a mission church. But my, po my point is that we did things backwards. Most churches buy a piece of land, they build a church, and then later on, then they put up an arena. But you, you know, not a covered arena. I mean, that's a blessing. A covered arena? Man, there's, there's cowboy churches that would give their eye tooth for, the, for what we have here. But the, get back home, what I'm saying. Try, try, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, there's, there seems to be in, in our church a division there. And it should not be. We should not have a division. Uh, I, I think it's because, like I said, we, we did things backwards, and we had a, just with 60 members, we, were, we, uh, we uh, got a bank loan for the whole 300 uh, plus thousand dollars for the 12 acres and the arena. And that means that the majority of people's country club ties go to that. Amen? But get out of that mindset. Get out of that mindset. We as a church purchased that church. Then we built this church. This church is paid for. So people, I don't know, it just, it just gives people a, 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 a thanks for this. It's them and us. And that should never be in the body. It shouldn't be. So the first part of our fixing that we got to take care of is that in our church. And we're going to take that head on today. We have a midweek service in our church. And I have to remind everybody, this is a cowboy church. Amen? Amen. Cowboy church. It's not a regular church. You just don't have music and, and, and worship and, and, a, and, and a teach a, preach a sermon and go home. This is the Cowboy Church. Our midweek service is Bibles and Bulls right there Thursday night in that arena. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is part of Raptor J. That's us. I, I, I might say this, it should be us. But I, I'm there, guys, I mean, almost every Thursday, but I see very few of our church members on the midweek service there. Let's get this thing connected, amen? amen. Let's break, let's fix this part of the brokenness of our church and connect these two. Amen. They're the same. They're us. Amen. We're them. Amen? amen? We cannot... I don't think we should be complaining about something we're not part of. Amen? Amen. we got to be involved. We're all in this together. Amen? Amen. Amen? There are some other areas that we're going to cover along the way. But that was... Yeah, to me, that's one of the biggies right there. That's one of the biggies. There's some kind of a division there, and I don't know why, and it ain't right. I guess what I'm saying, trying to say, guys, come be a part of your midweek service. Amen? Amen. Don't be part of it. All right. 
Next week we're going to be covering the, it's the love chapter we're going to be in. In fact, I, I know what the title is going to be, it's Love and That Love. It's going to be the subtitle the next week. I've already, I've already put that on my heart. But in, and we're going to spring week. I'll, I'll join the two together and show you. In fact, guys, if you really want to do some homework, you can go back through uh, 1 Corinthians. And there are a lot of references to the church and, and, and the way we should be operating. And uh, I purposely did not start in, in chapter 11. Don't go back and read that and you'll know why. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I got in enough trouble last week. I didn't want to get to talk about women again. <laughs> but it's, y'all, y'all go do the, your own homework. Amen. <laughs> y'all understand <laughs> Y'all, once you, once you get in there, you'll see what I'm on. I ain't scared of it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll come right in the middle of some scripture and give it boldly as God puts it out there on my heart. I ain't scared of y'all. <laughs> I'm, scared, I'm scared of God. Amen? God the Father, that's who I'm scared of. But, uh, no, I, the reason I didn't start there is because Chapter 12, 13, and 14 go together like, a, like gloves, and, and, uh, and that's the reason I did Guys, I haven't went long enough today. Uh, you know, I, we talked about the, uh, the church body and, and being per, part of that. You know, the, the first step becoming part of the body of Christ is to get, is to be part of His body, and you do that by asking Christ to come into your heart. You receive Christ into your heart. I started out talking about the Holy Spirit. There is no one to spend a little bit of time on, on the first part of, of uh, chapter 12. And that is that the, it's the same Spirit that connects all of us together. The Holy Spirit dwelling in each and every Christian that unifies us together. But you cannot be part of that body if you're not, if you don't first take the step of asking Christ to come into your heart. Amen? That's the first step. And then Christ gets you plugged in to a local body to serve. Amen? Let's uh, just go before the Lord, guys. This is the, you know, it's all about bringing glory to God. And there's nothing on this, in this world that brings greater glory to God than for uh, lost souls to ask Jesus. And, you know, I'll ask Jesus into their heart. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't ask you, Brian. I usually say, Brian, let's do this. <laughs> We're going to get some sign language on her sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to be signing to, 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 to Brian, so it's got to be some Indian sign. <laughs> Send up a smoke seal or something. <laughs> but, uh, guys, it's a, that nothing brings more glory to God than, than when a, a lost person, a lost soul, comes to the knowledge of His Son and gets on their knees and cries out to God and asks them to come into their heart. Nothing brings God more glory. Another thing that, uh, that brings God glory is when we come into this church, into this hospital. And when the body is a member of the body is hurting and ailing, and we bring it up to this altar, whatever it is, and we cry out to God for healing, nothing brings Him greater glory than that. Both of those first begin with Christ in your heart. My point is this: if you came to here today, guys, and you got something weighing heavy on your heart. Bring it up to the altar. Leave it here and bring glory to God's name. Amen. No other reason, just that. <clears throat> Maybe that's the reason you're going through. Amen. If you want to ask Christ into your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting. Every head bowed, every eye closed, just say a simple prayer like this and mean it from your heart. Just humble yourself before God. And just admit to Him, Lord, I'm a sinner. Right now, Lord, I turn from that sin. I agree, Lord, that you're right and I'm wrong. And 
and I want to do things your way. So Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart now. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you died on that cross for my sin. And that you rose back to life. And you're living in me now. I recognize you as my God, my Lord, and my friend. And from this moment forward, I will serve you in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. You said that prayer for the first time, guys.